Good morning. Welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather and it is 1.30 in the morning and we are down in the barn again on another cold evening with another goat in labor. This is Mayhem. This is Mayhem's second freshen. And given the fact that Mayhem is basically my least attentive mama, I really wanted to make sure that I was gonna be here for the labor and delivery. Now, maybe I'm not being fair to Mayhem because her last freshen was her first freshen. And a lot of first time moms don't know what they're doing the first go around, but Mayhem, like once she pushed her babies out, she didn't want anything to do with them. She looked at them and she said, oh, okay. And then just was eating. She ate her hay. She's got two feet and a nose back here. She's kind of not pushing again. She didn't care about drying her babies off. She didn't care about nursing her babies. I really had to coach her through her first hours of motherhood. So maybe she's learned a lot since then. We'll have to see. So I actually decided to come inside and watch Mayhem for a little bit longer on the monitor from the warmth of indoors. After sitting down there with her for a little while, I realized that she's in the early stages of labor for sure, but she's not really in any like active stages where I need to be helicopter momming her. So I'm gonna give her her space. I feel like she's gonna labor better and I'm definitely gonna stay warmer in here. And we're gonna get down there as soon as things get a little bit more intense.
are covered in goo. This one's pretty, pretty girl. Look at the goo on her. Look at this. Look at this. It's so thick. Look at it on brother. Oh my goodness. There you go. These are two babies. Are there more? So Mayhem did really great. She does have a habit of basically not putting everything she has into pushing, but we were able to get baby boy and baby girl out safely. And she is being a much better mom than she was her first go around. So I'm really happy to see that she's learned a thing or two and her kids are nearly dry now. I know little boy has gotten um, something to drink, which is great. Little girl, she's standing up and I'm gonna help guide her to the teat shortly. Pretty look at this. Check it out. Oh, yeah. Pretty and pretty loud. We like it. You know, you look like your sister Boba. You do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good girl. We need to make sure you're dry. Because if they're wet, they get cold real fast. It's obviously, I don't know if you can tell by the way I'm dressed. It's really cold out right now. Goodness, the lungs. And the heat lamp helps, but you know, it's nothing compared to just being dry. My friend Letty over at the Heavenly Homestead, she uses a hair dryer to dry off her kids on low setting. And that's very, very effective. I don't have a hair dryer. If I got one, it would literally just be for warming goats, but it would probably still be a pretty worthy investment. So I did give her some warm molasses water and I need to feed Mayhem now. I was kind of holding off on feeding her because I wanted her attention to be on drying them off, but right now she's laying down. So I need her up so I can get little girl to drink and food is a great way to get them up. That was a really good drink, so that makes me really happy to see. Uh, we need to get you dried off all the way. Hi, Titus. Hi. Hi, baby. Hi, Shook. 
So little baby Titus, he is from Pesky's birth, so one birth ago from this one. And he is horned, or he was horned. And I just did the figure eight disbudding method on him. It's something that I haven't done before. I haven't done many disbuddings myself, but we're really hoping to prevent the formation of scurs. And what scurs are, are just little bits of horn that manage to not get uh, cauterized or burned off. And they do grow back, they can grow in, in really crazy shapes and sometimes can present problems for the goat so we did that in order to hopefully prevent scurs on this little guy and pretty soon he'll have a nice smooth head and you won't even know that it happened Here's little boy, nice and dry, beautiful, beautiful cream color. I think he's technically a light buckskin, although he doesn't really have too much color differentiation from the front and the back. He's a pretty solidly blonde color. I know, you're gorgeous. And Havoc strikes again with the spots. Look at this beauty. Isn't she amazing? Say hi. See how pretty she is? She is simply gorgeous. Yes, you are. She's got one little moon spot that I've seen on her eye right here. And she does have all these spots back here, which I'm not sure if they're technically moon spots or not. She is a cream color. And what a moon spot is, is just a really beautiful spot of color on the body of the goat that kind of makes you look twice and think, oh, that's unique. That's beautiful. There's a couple rules with moon spots. They can't be white and they can't be on white. She is a really nice cream color. She's kind of like a coffee that you put way too much creamer in. And so these brown spots back here may technically be moon spots. I like to kind of look at a moon spot as one of those really awesome, like almost out of place looking gray spots that can happen on a goat. Kind of like the color of the moon in a way. Like they're shiny-ish and they just, they're striking. And she does have the one here. It looks like there's one on her shoulder here and basically on, on the base of her neck looks like there's another one. So she's beautifully moon spotted. She is already sold and we're so glad that we get to have her at least for a couple of days, huh? Mayhem here buried her placenta. So she has not eaten it. It's been over 24 hours. So I'll show you what we do with these. I do like to give my does the opportunity to eat their placenta. It helps give back some of the lost nutrients that, you know, the stress of giving birth can kind of sap from them. But if they're not gonna eat it within 24 hours, this is what I do. Pig, pig, here. <laughs> So if you don't have pigs to help you dispose of things like that, what I would do is probably compost it, dig a hole, bury it. There's a, quite a lot of people, um, humans, that when they have their babies, they'll bury their placenta underneath a tree. So that's an option. Our next doe to give birth with Havoc babies is Eidolon. And Eidolon is not due until January 1st, so she has some weeks to go yet. Definitely bookmark this playlist. We have many more does to give birth in the normal kidding season time, March, April timeframe. My March looks very busy, so it should be interesting. Mm -hmm. 